It's Bob and Tom Tonight, starring Chick McGee, Christy Lee, Josh Arnold, Ace Cosby, Pat Godwin, Willie Griswold, and Tom Griswold. Hi. Hey, there's Ace at the Omaha Steak Joke Desk. I got cat stories. Oh, Neat. really? <laughs> <laughs> and there's Willie. Hey, Jay. Ha, let's turn to sports, shall we? Or, yeah, we can turn to sports. You don't want to get one of Ace's cat stories out of the way? We have a cat story coming up. <laughs> we do have a cat story, yeah. <laughs> He's got cat stories, Chick. All right. Let's do it. All right, Ace. You know, later on, I'm going to uh, explain to you all how radio works. But I'll, go ahead, Ace. No, I just found it interesting. I, I was going home yesterday morning. Yes, tell me everything. I'm, I'm ready. I'm at a stoplight, and I see on the phone post, the big poster board, and it says, Lost Cat. Right. Phone number. Description, orange. Orange with white paws. Orange. $400 reward. Whoa. What? So, that's all. Oh. $400 uh, for a cat. That's your story? <laughs> Did you find the cat? That's not now real. I know. Now I know Chip. how how Bob and Tom felt all those years when I told my I found a dog in my front yard story. I found that story riveting. Uh, $400. I'm glad that I went didn't. with it. I want to follow up. Is oh. the sign still there? As far I as you know, I kind of this morning. I think it's still there. Okay. Why don't you run and go to the check? And make sure. That we want to be. I'm going to find a parking space today. And Oh, that's boy, oh, boy. That's really, wow. really something. Hey, man, when he has $400, $400. tomorrow, you're going to be asking for yeah. whatever. He, he'll be bringing in Ace, donuts. Yeah, you keep an eye on what things cost perpetually. They love the cat. Can yeah. you put yes. a price on your dog? No. If your dog was yeah. missing, would uh, you? 10000 Oh, somebody will kidnap her. I'll kidnap your dog. <laughs> yeah. I'll, kidnap your dog. <laughs> I'll, I'll kidnap her. Yeah. Although, I don't know. Lately, she's... I told you she uh, she's got it in for me. She steps on my feet every time she comes in. That's one of my a, favorite things. It's, it's, it's a sign of respect. I know she's vindictive. She's, no, it's a it, sign uh, of respect. No. Right, but she just doesn't realize how heavy she is. Oh, and it, she's eighty pounds. It hurts him. Yeah, it, dogs it, are all legs, really. When they, I have very them. soft feet. Sports Handle said a survey of NFL fans across the country and asked them about their drinking habits to find the booziest fan base of all the teams. Per the result. Fans of the Cincinnati Bengals, my fellow Ohioans, took the top spot. Really? Well, they have good reason to drink, don't they? Uh, <laughs> I would have thought Philadelphia it's for been, some reason. Uh, it's been a while. I guess it would have been Buffalo. The, uh, Philadelphia does the nitrous and the balloons. I don't know if they still do that or not. Oh. Maybe they cut back on that. I don't. I would hope. The fans do that? What <laughs> yeah, is it, a back... jam band concert? Well, they, the... they uh, Philly's known for, uh, yeah, you know, what used to be. Uh, yeah. Yeah. you got to be careful doing that stuff, man. <laughs> that is well, you want to get nice and high before you throw batteries at a player. <laughs> oh. Safety first. <laughs> uh, Cincinnati Bengals took the top spot. Fans drinking an average of 5.2 alcoholic beverages per game. Whew. That's how they're counting this. Stadium Bal beers? Baltimore Ravens fans came in second with alcoholic. The, they have liquor at stadiums too. With an average of 4.7 drinks per game and the Bills in third with 4.5. So <gasps> Bengals, Ravens, Bills. Okay. Fans of the Chargers spent the most on alcohol. Well, that's because probably it's in sure. Los Angeles with an LA prices. of $60.93 $60 on alcohol at the game. 49ers fans. Yes. Yes. Of course, the wine comes right out of the tap there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They drank the least with an average of 2.6 drinks per game and spent the least on alcohol. Oh, well, it's because they paid uh, all the homeless people outside the stadium. Too. Just over 30 bucks. Cut that out. And yeah, they pay so much for their house, they can't afford anything else. Uh, the Bills Mafia ranked number one on the list of fans who are most likely to drink before a game. That's right. That's what I was looking for. Oh. Oh, there's the uh, they're the kings of tailgating, right? With the butt luges and all that. Yes. Buffalo? Yeah, Buffalo. Yeah, Buffalo. Yeah. Lighting mm -hmm. tables on fire and then jumping on those tables. Yeah, the tailgate there is like professional wrestling. They jump off of vans <laughs> and they land on the tables and they try to break the tables. Chick, how's the tailgating at a Redskins game? It's it's a gathering of gentlemen, John. <laughs> ladies, some ladies yeah. and gentlemen. Mm -hmm. We exchange thoughts and feelings of the sure, day. Sure. We, How early we, does it happen? I remember in, when the St. Louis Rams were a thing, I, my brothers, uh, they would go, yeah, we got to leave at like 6.30 a.m. to go tailgate. What? Mm -hmm. For a people one o'clock game? Crazy yeah. early. I, I think the stadium parking lot opens at 7. See, that's the that's a dirty little secret of the Washington football team. Uh, yeah, you can get tickets. Parking passes <laughs> hard come by. are hard to come by, Man. and they are prized. Didn't uh, you take public transportation? Yeah, everybody, you park way down the way, and then you get on a bus and are taken to the uh, stadium. And one time we tried the Metro. 
which is a nice, I don't know, six, seven mile walk when you get off the Metro stop up to the stadium. Oh, oh. After the game was delightful. <laughs> <laughs> Did but, you win? But, but one time <laughs> after the game, uh, Joe Theismann insisted on uh, taking uh, us back to our hotel. Well, that's nice. Wouldn't it have been funny if he just walked you to the Metro? <laughs> in, his beautiful, in his beautiful Jeep, and he looked at me and said, uh, I've got something I want to play for you. And he had the CD, and he put the CD of Mr. Obvious in the CD. Wow. wow. And Ace? Hey. Going to tell a joke hey. from... Omaha Steak, which, uh, boy, they can't leave the show now with Tom having a cow part. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's Old Brad Loyal. Yeah. And Willie Griswold. Hey, man. A quick update on your dad. You said he was doing fine. He, everything's A-OK, -okay, right? He's doing great. We were watching Jeopardy. He's getting all the answers right. And uh, someone just wrote in, Tom got a cow valve. I have a friend who got a pig valve. And every time she has heartburn, she smells bacon. <laughs> so maybe he'll smell burgers. That's funny. <laughs> I like that. Right. Good little joke. Ace, why don't you take some notes? <laughs> See, that's how you do it, Ace. See? Now, for those of you who missed it, I, I, I'm go we're going to do this every hour. Oh, the story from oh, Ace? Oh, yeah, the, oh, the yeah. kitty cat story. Now, Ace, uh, uh, <laughs> tell us again. Where, Is that where the scene? Were, yeah. Well, yeah, what were you doing? Hey, Mark, Mark Mike from our staff said he saw the same signs. So. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, and how, he said it was months old, by the way. Hey, you wonder how that conversation we, went? Yeah. I don't know why they hated my story. Mark? Yeah, I saw the sign, too. <laughs> I was at a stoplight. Uh -huh. I yep. saw a poster board. <laughs> Not unusual. Poster board on uh, on a telephone pole, right? Yeah. Amazing. Lost cat, description, mm -hmm. phone number, and $400 reward. Wow. And, but do you think that's too high? I think that's... That's very nice. You have a cat. What <laughs> yeah. would you offer for, for a re reward? For my original cat? Couldn't put a price on it. Oh, See, okay. there you yeah, go. But what about this cat? I'll give her away for 400 bucks. <laughs> that's not giving her away for 400 bucks. That's selling her. Yes or no, is this cat clawed your balls? Yes or no? Yes. <laughs> oh, really? that's, so that's, I mean, that cat had to go immediately. Man, oh, man. Oh, wow. That's, oh, it's hey. a track phone hotline. It might be, a, be. Hey, man, I bet it's a cat. Hello, Bob and Tom Show. <laughs> hey, Greg, it's Babe Ruth. Oh, oh, it is. We had a new one. Hey, I believe I heard the town crier talking about that old Saponis Wagner cutting <laughs> into a bunch of lettuce, Diane. That's yes, right. sir, babe, yeah. His ball card's worth how much? So <laughs> Just over six and a half million dollars. Ah, applesauce. <laughs> <laughs> Any blue nose that pays that much for a ball card needs to be socked right in the kisser. <laughs> and how. And Not how. to mention, I don't recall Wagner ever calling his own shot like the babe. It was a World Series of 32. <laughs> Old Charlie Root stuck two by me. I stepped back in the box and raised my right paw. As I pointed toward center field, oh, yeah. I said, I'm going to hit the next pitch ball out past the flagpole. <laughs> well, the good Lord must have been with me. That day. <laughs> because that's exactly what happened. But truth <laughs> is, I was just letting the boys know there was a dame out in center waving her blubbers at the babe. <laughs> <laughs> I should have signed those skimmies, and we would have doubled the kind of money that Wagner brought in. Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. <laughs> 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 Bye, babe. Oh. He lives, doesn't he? Oh, oh, yes. Air up on the big screen is Atlanta Falcon fan. About, uh, what are you, 70% Greek? Do you, do you have a number on that? Can you give me a number? It's right at 50. I'm exactly half. You're oh, exactly okay. half. I didn't know that. Huh. My dad grew up in Kalamata. My mom grew up in Pennsylvania. Ah. <laughs> Where, now, where's that in Greece? Pennsylvania, Greece. Do they know that we have a Pennsylvania here? <laughs> Kalamata. Is that the olive place? Uh, we have fun. Yes. Yeah. Ah. Best olives in the world. Uh, ah. Can't you picture little baby Kostaki <laughs> swaddled in grape leaves? <laughs> <laughs> so last week we did some of my favorite NFL quotes. And Tom loved it and asked me to go broader into the other sports, which I thought was a good idea. Yeah, so but he's, uh, Tom, Tom's not here. No. So... I I know, I know. But it, <laughs> no, no. I'm kidding. The man go. was right. Yeah, he sure was. Go ahead. As he the often man is. had a good point. Yeah. So here we go. Some of my favorite sports quotes. All right. They asked Shaq if he went to the Parthenon when he was in Greece. And he said, and I quote, I really can't remember the names of the clubs that we went to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's great. Torian Polk, college wide receiver for Houston, said about his coach one time, quote, he treats us like men. He lets us wear earrings. <laughs> nice. 
right. Nice. You know, nice. like men will do. Mm -hmm. uh, baseball player Pedro Guerrero said, sometimes they write what I say, not what I mean. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, that's inconvenient. Isn't there a story that they pay, Pedro Guerrero was an amazing baseball player, but he mm. honestly could not give you change for a 20. I guess Seriously? he, he was, had the uh, acumen of, of a toddler. I got, he was no amazing. No common like, sense. He, and he just could not function in the real world. It, it was wow. insane. I, yeah. I'm surprised there aren't more guys like that. It seems yeah. like they're so good at the one thing. Right. You'd think they'd be, some of them would be really terrible at, at the other things. It would know? seem, ah, uh, what's the word? <laughs> Fair. It was, uh, Shoeless, Shoeless Joe couldn't read or write. Yeah, yeah. right. There you go. Yeah. yeah, but he was a big cheater. Oh, wow. Though, so we all, oh. well, he, all oh, right. Couldn't tie his shoes either. You know, <laughs> cursory glance at the, that's a very good point. Wait a yep. Wait a minute. Yeah. Hold it. Let's Had Velcro been around. <laughs> Let me tell you something. What was your line again about Shoeless Joe? He was so stupid, what? Couldn't even tie his shoes. Oh yeah. God. That is an amazing, yeah. that is an amazing joke. Couldn't tie his own shoes. As far as I'm concerned, you got joke of the week. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's certainly front runner. <laughs> right in there. NBA guard Jason Kidd once said, we're going to turn this team around 360 degrees. <laughs> yeah. I've done that. I've A classic mistake. I've, yes. missed, I've mixed up 360 with 180 all the sure. time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it happens. Uh, Hank Aaron said, it took me 17 years to get 3,000 hits in baseball. I did it today, one afternoon on the golf course. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Boxing trainer Lou Duva <laughs> talking about one of his boxers, quote, He's a guy who gets up at 6 o'clock in the morning, regardless of what time it is. <laughs> that is excellent. Perfect. <laughs> they asked NBA forward Antoine Winfield why he takes so many threes, and he said, because there are no fours. <laughs> yeah! That's a great answer. That's That's awesome. great. That is a great answer. <laughs> NBA forward Drew Gooden once said, I've had to overcome a lot of diversity. <laughs> sure. Sure. You know, Whoops. diversity's tough. You got a Chinese kid in the class or whatever. That's tough. You know, <laughs> have to overcome. <laughs> Three times Masters champion uh, Jimmy Dameret? Dameret? Oh, uh, uh, Jimmy, De Jimmy Demerit. 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 Jimmy Demerit? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's I not think. that's not French sounding at all. That sounds Demi like you got in trouble. Demerit. Yeah. yeah. He said, uh, golf and sex are the only things you can enjoy without being good at them. <laughs> wow, that's great. Inspiring. Yeah. Inspiring. Uh, <laughs> Inspiring. You know, enjoy. Uh, NFL lineman Lincoln Kennedy said on voting, quote, I was going to write myself in, but I was afraid I'd get shot. Oh, man, boy, Lincoln Kennedy or not? Link, yeah. Uh -huh. oh, yeah. yeah. Lincoln God. Kennedy. Yeah, Who would name, name it? Their kid, if he, you were Kennedy, yes. don't name him Lincoln. That's. Yeah, no. Uh, Dad, can I borrow the convertible? No. no. <laughs> well, can, can I, I go to a play? play? Yeah. No. Can I borrow the convertible no. to go to the play is the line. <laughs> Yeah, the one I did two or three weeks ago. Josh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, you did? That's right. Oh, you did. Can I you prove just... that? Can you prove that? We've got it recorded. Yeah. That, oh, that's right. Never, never mind. Roll the tape. Roll the tape, Minnie. <laughs> that was Josh. Uh, there was an Auburn dorm fire that destroyed 20 books, and Florida coach Steve Spurrier, who I don't normally like, did say a hilarious thing. Quote, the real tragedy is that 15 of them hadn't been colored yet. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a shot. That's a shot. Uh, that's what you do. Yep. You're, yeah. Uh, Major League journeyman Joe Garigiola said, quote, I went through baseball as a player to be named later. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Boy, America guy. loved him for a while. Yes, was you're right. A, a game really show did. host or something? Or I think, no. kind of a morning show. Wasn't there a morning? Wasn't he, he on Today something. or something? Uh, he hosted Today? Yeah, he did yeah. something on TV. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, I was I wondering that. Because I'm not a big baseball guy, but I know that name, so it must have been a great player. Was he just being modest? Did and I don't he think there's run. I, I, I'm sure he knows. Well, not now. He won't. He won't help us. But right. uh, uh, he knew how to pronounce his name, and I, I don't know if there's a consensus. I, I've Garagiola? always heard Gar Garagiola. 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 That's what. But I could. Be... I've, I've always heard Garagiola. Garagiola. Okay. All yeah. right. All right. There you go. All right. <laughs> they asked Peter Crouch what he would be if he weren't a professional soccer player, and he said, "A virgin." <laughs> that's so funny. Boy, that's uh, that's some good advice there. Yeah. <laughs> Gary Lineker said, soccer's a simple game. 22 men chase a ball for 90 minutes. At the end, the Germans win. <laughs> funny. <laughs> <Man. Soccer. laughs> 
Old school offensive lineman Art Donovan. You, you could probably dig through and find a bunch from this guy. This guy was a character. I, I met uh, Art Donovan, a sweet man. He was really, really, really oh, I'm so a nice happy to guy. Hear that. Really a nice guy. Uh, like, if you, it, for the listeners who don't know the name, it's a face you would know from those any black and white NFL anything. He's he's one that he was a character. He was a big era. guy, heavy guy, and he had a crew cut, and he was on Letterman every now and then. And yeah, he right, was, oh, right. Really, Apparently, really he funny. did Carson back in the day. Oh, he really? was like a beloved character. Yeah. yeah. Huh. So one of them, one of his great quotes: "Quote, I'm a light eater. As soon as it's light, I start eating." <laughs> <laughs> That's a smart man. Uh, Bob Green, Coach Bob Green, after a close loss. Uh, quote, it's kind of like watching your mother-in-law go off a cliff in your brand new catalog. You get mixed feelings. Yeah, that is mixed feelings. <laughs> get mixed feelings. Two more of these. Uh, okay. Second baseman Tito Fuentes oh. uh, said, they shouldn't throw at me. I'm the father of five or six kids. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Might want to get it right there, Tito. <laughs> yeah, get back to us. Uh, Fuentes is Spanish for Cromarty. That's maybe what's happening. <laughs> a lot of kids. Uh, let's close on my personal favorite from today. I, I never saw this one before. I just discovered it when I was surfing around. A player told college basketball coach Shelby Metcalf that he got four Fs and a D. <laughs> and coach said, son, sounds to me like you're spending too much time on one subject. <laughs> Man, that's good. <laughs> that's Christy at the Navy Federal Credit Union News Desk. There's Pat Godwin hey, in the Oxford Gold Performance Pavilion. And I believe he and uh, Josh Arnold have uh, cooked up a little something for us. Well, this yeah, time. But is first, that... we have to do a story. Did we introduce Willie? And there's his? Willie and there's Ace. Go. And I'm at the DoorDash sidekick chair. Where you're going to be delivering. Did I tell Did you hear that while you were Oh, late? yeah. Did you hear what we're going to do? We we're going to make you deliver some DoorDash one morning. If oh, no kidding? If yeah. you're lucky enough to uh, call at the right time and Josh gets your order, you will be delivering breakfast. I'm in. Wouldn't that be fun? Good people who do that? Uh, man, I, boy, do I... I, you know, I Look, I'm going to pat myself on the back. I tip. Oh, I do, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Heck yeah. yeah. Don't you think... Uh, you know, ding dong, DoorDash... Oh, hi, Josh. Oh. I bet it's thirsty work out there. Yeah, it is. You got the food? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good luck for my scenario. Starbucks baristas are saying they're getting fed up with making overly complicated drink orders. Oh, then quit. I don't blame... Oh. <laughs> Hi, welcome. A lot of I, people uh, would like those jobs. Insider. I'm, I'm Chick McGee. And I'm, uh, welcome to another episode of Wrong Side of History with our guest today, Josh Arnold. Josh? Insider spoke with over a dozen current and former baristas who said customers are pushing drink customization to the limit Barista. with excessive, ridiculous, even disgusting orders. Uh, don't offer them then. A former Los Angeles barista told the news site the modifications are out of control and some drinks had mile-long stickers with ingredient lists that could not even fit on the cup. One even asked to blend egg bites into a drink. <laughs> Like those sous vide things? Yes. yes. And yeah. once again, ladies and gentlemen, here's Willie Griswold's Starbucks order. Go. I get, here's what I really get is I get a venti cold brew with a splash of soy milk and three pumps of sugar, sugar-free sugar vanilla syrup. That's all it is. Wow. I added like a topping to be silly with you guys. Does that come with a tampon? It does not come with a tampon, <laughs> oh, Josh. Oh, my Lord. I have to go to Do the store and get think, them afterwards. Do you ever think about what you're going to say? <laughs> no, that's the fun. Oh. Well, also, she, this morning, I did get one of those egg bites this morning, and I was eating it. This, I was using a fork to eat it. And then Chick goes, are you eating a damn cake pop? <laughs> I thought he was eating a cake pop. <laughs> he was furious at me. Aren't those? Wonderful oh, cake, my pops. God. cake pops. Yes, uh, I don't know who came up with those. But they, they, should, they win uh, the Nobel Prize. It was Reginald Cake Pop. A former barista in Beverly <laughs> Hills cake shared pop. an image with insiders showing an order made with twelve shots of coffee and five shots of hazelnut syrup. That's <laughs> come on. I, can you imagine? No. So what this is is Starbucks has a very user friendly app that makes something like my order pretty simple, but also where those there's all these options and right. I think kids on TikTok are just trying to outdo their pals. Uh, that that's annoying. Yes. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, that shouldn't be allowed. If you genuinely love the drink you're ordering, you should be able to they offer it. You should be able to order it without being harassed. What in fact we oh. happened to that guy who tried to order the complicated drink. Right. There was a gentleman who had a really ridiculous His uh, name was Edward. I believe. Okay. And, and then baristas were calling it the Edward. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, one barista complained online and got fired. Yeah. Uh, that's right. I believe Pat oh. Godwin and I have a song about it. Son of a gun. <laughs> 
Venti Caramel Rib and Crunch. Extra ice, I want a bunch. Five bananas, heavy cream, I love this drink of mine. Extra caramel crunch topping, <laughs> lots of extra whipped cream. Extra caramel drizzle, screw the other folks in line. Seven Frappuccino <laughs> chips, sweet and yummy on my lips. Extra salted butter topping, don't care what you think. Extra cinnamon dolce, sprinkle sure would make my day. One palm honey blend, shut up and make my drink. Seven pump star caramel sauce, go ahead bitch to your boss. Oh. Five pumps of Frappuccino roast, another oh. junk. Double blended smooth and nice, don't forget the extra ice. If you make it incorrectly, there's no tip for you, but My order got you fired, but you cannot blame me because you tried to shame me. My order got you fired. My Frappuccino cost you your jabberino. My order got you fired. So good. Oh, I love it. So nice. good. Holy so hell, that was almost on uh, note and everything. Hey, oh, I, oh. Almost on key. Almost Josh, on note. Oh, I get such a kick out of knowing that you're the nicest guy in the world. The <laughs> idea of you calling a server punk just makes me laugh. So can you imagine? Make my drink, punk. And bitch to your boss. I don't care. The, the grown bully makes me laugh so hard. Even though in, uh, it bumps me out real bad, but uh, it does. Uh, <laughs> just adults being bullies is. Uh, oh. oh, my Lord. So funny because it's so ridiculous. It very much so. Now, what do you have for us, dummy? <laughs> The joke being, I am going to see. kill you. Oh, thank you, Christy. Kick his ass, Christy. Oh, we have sharp knives in the green room, Christy. No. Watch the entire show live or on demand at bobandtom.com or listen live with the Bob and Tom app. And be sure to tune in next time for more Bob and Tom Tonight.